Welcome. This is the second lecture in the module about writing business plans. We call this lecture, Why Do We Bus Do Business Planning? And let's jump right into this. Why we go about and what we do and why we do business planning. First of all, you always have to say to yourself, why am I doing this? And of course, in this particular case, you might say, because it's required of me. However, there's a lot of good reasons why we write business plans and why we take the time and the effort to put them together. Mostly, many times the trigger for writing a business plan is when it's time to raise capital. Your business has been going, maybe you have a prototype, those sorts of things, and it's time for you to decide you're going to bring some additional capital into your business to help your, your company move forward further to really uh, realize its full potential. In this respect, you want to put something together that is a selling document. That is something that creates the impression or provides the right storyline so that people immediately understand what you're talking about. It overcomes their objections and their doubts and convinces them that they want to be part of this particular opportunity that you're presenting. One of the things you have to be really fully aware of, cognizant of, when you're doing your business planning in this context is that your audience is going to be sophisticated parties. They know business, they know finance, they know markets, they know operations, they know product development. You can't fake it. You really cannot blow smoke and expect to get any sort of attention or funding. Red flags go off and you're dismissed. Remember, most business plans are immediately dismissed by investors. Your job is to get through all of that and you do that by remaining Credible. Your business plan, your presentations are really a filter. People are looking ways, looking for ways to, or looking for reasons or identifying things that would cause them not to want to go forward. So you always have to just make sure that you are honest and completely aware of the details. Do not try to say that you understand something when you don't. In that sense, it's a selling document. Also, however, Business plans are a blueprint. They help you know where your business is going to go. If you're doing everything yourself and you keep it all in your head, perhaps. But when you have a team and you're trying to organize a lot of different activities and energies in different directions, you really do need a blueprint, a roadmap, something like that will, will help people understand what it is they're trying to accomplish. If indeed, it's clear what needs to be done and who needs to do it. And we'll get more into this when we talk about the operations plans and the milestones. Uh, you also helps you raise capital because people can see that you have a plan, that you know where you have to get to, and they, can, and, and they realize that you also are aware that there are milestones and objectives and things that you have to get done. Um, it's rare that the plan is completely on its own. You can always use plans that other people have used in your industry, um, similar things that people are trying to accomplish. This is a situation where you bring in as much information and as many, and we'll talk about this a little bit later and how you do plans, but you bring in as much information as you want to. Uh, in the business plan arena, this is a matter of taking the best ideas that you find and making use of them. Of course, always being sure that it's ultimately your work and not plagiarism. The third thing that a plan is used for, and this is one that's often, uh, often neglected, but it's one of the most important elements of a plan. When you are sitting down now and developing a plan or when your business is at the early stages and you're thinking through what you're trying to accomplish, sure things will change and things will become different. But you have an opportunity then to have a big vision and to think about the big things that you want to do. Open new stores, expand here, come up with new products or services. When you capture all of that, you have the opportunity later on down the line when things get busy, you're putting out fires, you're working 12 hour days. You have something that you can go back and reflect upon what you thought you were going to accomplish and what you really need to accomplish and things that you maybe forgot about or put off and continue to put off and they get out of mind by the day-to-day -day operations and you could then revisit them and go forward and see how you're doing versus what your expectations are. And that's another way that you can say you learn what you've done right, you learn what you haven't done well, you make adjustments. This retrospective view of the plan is not to say you have to do what was in the plan, 
but only to remind you what you thought so you could make reasoned decisions about going forward, not only from your own initial position or perspective, but also from the perspective of what you have, where you are currently. So it's all about continuing to move forward. With that, we conclude this short lecture and talk next in the next lecture about what we're really doing when we're doing business planning. What is it that we're actually doing? We talked about why you do it, but what are you actually doing when you do a plan? And that will help us inform what contents we have in it and how we work forward. So we'll see you on the next lecture where we engage what is it that we do when we do business planning. We'll see you then.